Our first speaker is Cyril Pernay from the University of Edinburgh. Um, he's going to tell us about fully reproducible EEG analyses with EEG Lab and LIMO EEG. And I think sharing and data analysis for human research has some additional hurdles like confidentiality. So I'm really excited to hear how we can uh, try to overcome this. So please take it away. Thank you, thank you very much. So share this, okay. So uh, the talk is not gonna be actually on the data, but starting from data. So starting from bits formatted EEG data. And then we use EEG Lab on a lot of the new plugins uh, developed over the last few years. So just to start, uh, we start with bids. So if you don't know what is bids, this is the brain imaging data structure. And I'm happy to take questions about this. So we developed a uh, means to share data. And the way they are structured allows to develop bits tools. So the bits tools have been developed and that allows to import automatically all of the data uh, in one go. So of course you can do it through usual graphical user interface, but also it's a single line of tools uh, of code which of course is what you need to do reproducible uh, data analysis. You specify where are your data, possibly over options that you want. And that allows you to take data on the left side, which is bit structure data. And that imports into each lab in one, just one command line. I'd create a whole study with all the information you need. From that step forward, you want to do your data processing, uh, signal digital, data pre-processing, I would say. Uh, there's a couple of new plugins interesting in EEG Lab, clean raw data, and also AC label. So I'm gonna focus here on AC label. Uh, so AC label is the classifications of ICA to separate brain activity from muscles, eye movements, heart, eye noise, and channel noise. So this is a machine learning algorithm, which has been tested uh, de deployed on like, thousands of components, which have been labeled by experts and non-experts and trained. And so here is an example, for instance, from one subject. So this is uh, data from Wakeman and Hanson. This is phase data processing, right? You present faces, familiar, unfamiliar, and scrambled, and you ask uh, if they are different, and also you repeat them. So here we can see, for instance, IC6 and the IC10, both with somewhat uh, right lateralized components. And what's interesting is that, of course, you can see the IC6, the label is labeled 99% brain, whereas the IC10 is mostly muscles and some other stuff which is not part of our class. And so this allows to run your usual ICA. So code-wise, that would be simply to say for each subject, you run ICA, whichever type of ICA you like, and then you just run the labeling, which is pop IC label, this new tool, this new tool developed in EEG Lab. Here, I decided only to pick up uh, muscle and eye movements, and then I reject these and reconstruct the data. And so this allows to be fully automatic and also fully reproducible. Although, as you already know, or many of you might know, ICA sometimes gives slightly different results depending on the seeds. Uh, now the last tool from there, your data have been imported using bits. They've been pre-processed. And now you can do the statistical analysis using the LIMO tools. Again, you make the design. And then you can run the, uh, that runs the first level analysis using pop LIMO and then random effects. Uh, just to show you two examples. One is a first level analysis, a standard three by three design. Uh, where you can find face effect, repetition effect. And then finally, we can redo something more complex using, for instance, the time between repetition levels. And so it's a fully flexible toolbox for your hierarchical linear models. And again, three, line, three command lines are enough to redo all of the analysis. So the conclusion is that uh, the newly developed bits tools allow to import the data. Uh, that's create automatically uh, what's called a study uh, with the different experimental conditions. Then you can pre-process the data and IC label allows to fully automated artifact projections and things like this. And finally, you can automatically uh, run your statistical analysis using LIMO tools 
uh, which are very flexible and allows you to encode any type of statistical designs. Uh, and just to finish the last slides, uh, if you want to have questions, uh, particularly interested in brain imaging data structure, and many collaborators across the world, and also I'm the main developers of the linear uh, modeling toolbox, which interface with VGLab, and we're working on the development for our future. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Um, so while people are writing their questions in the Q&A, maybe I can get started. Um, so you mentioned, I mean, just a small thing about uh, how setting a different seed in the ICA labeling can cause different results. So I'm just wondering generally, is the goal to be able to fully reproduce and get identical results? Or is the goal rather that you can reproduce it to the extent that you can find the same main conclusions about the study? Um, but that you expect that there will always be variability that you just can't get rid of because you can't share every single detail. Uh, the goal is to be able to redo the, the same data processing, uh, so reproducible rather than replicable. Although if you are 100% reproducible, you should be able to be replicable. So the seeds in ICA usually uh, create very little differences, but depends the ICA algorithm you use. Uh, for instance, here we use run ICA, to be honest, I had to read, since I was developing this, we had to run pain analysis many, many different times. And you know, we're talking about in terms of reproducibility differences in terms of uh, you know, decimals that the values are not the same. So uh, that's, you know, uh, to me, it's good enough <laughs> if it's only two decimals. Right? Yeah. If you have a difference of 0 0.01 microvolt, you're like, okay, it's fine. Sure. Yeah, okay, so it's yeah, really just a limitation of whether people share all the details that they can, and then it's it should come out yeah, as I close mean, the, to... Yeah. The good thing with BITS is that, of course, uh, you've got access to the raw data and every single detail is about this data, right? Sure. Yeah. Great, thanks. So, yeah, we have a couple of questions coming in now. Um, the first, uh, I don't know, Horst, if you would like to turn on your video and join us, you can. But if not, I will read your question for you. Maybe I can start that. Yeah, OK, I'll read for him. So Horst is wondering, in EEG lab, how does the classification, for example, for brain versus muscle versus any other components actually work? Yeah, so the IC label, as I was saying, is a machine learning algorithm. So it's been trained uh, from the big archive of data, the chart centers. We could. Uh, I don't remember how many experts, uh, experts as you know, people who've been doing EEG for like uh, 10, 20 years, labeling thousands of components. So it means you don't have just one person, right? It's many different people. Also, it was interesting because there was a website where people could register. So we also had non-experts doing the labeling uh, with various level of expertise. And so which means basically it's a, it's a machine learning algorithm is uh, supervised machine learning algorithm, right? We got, we put in data in, we say, this is the class that you need to come up with. We trained it. And now if you will, because now it's been trained and it gives a, a high level of accuracy, uh, I think it's something like 99% accuracy. Uh, you can just throw in any new ICs and you will label them. And then you can see from the, from uh, the poster, since I made it as a poster as well, uh, you can see like the, it gives you also probabilities. So for instance here in the code, I use 0.8. So 80%, everything above 80% classification, I consider it as being uh, the right label. Yeah. So you can choose yourself, you know, whatever probabilities you can see. Sure. Great, thanks. Um, so we have a question from Lu Wang, which I think is gonna come on screen now. Lou is joining us now. Yes, now they're on the panel. Hi. Hi. Yeah, go ahead, please. Ah, great. Um, so uh, I was wondering um, if the uh, automated preprocessing with IC also effective for a few channels. 
um, because uh, I had, uh, well, uh, um, I myself used um, ICE and um, I found that, for example, for uh, 20 channels, um, it was effective uh, to separate uh, the uh, statistically independent uh, components. But, uh, for example, for a few channels, um, then it is not so effective. Uh, but for the one from EG Lab, I haven't tried yet. So the, the new uh, plugin. So I wonder if it's effective. Yeah, I would think um, that in general, ICA is not very effective as a method. So it's not nothing to do with labeling. It simply has to do with the decomposition because your matrix you know, only has four uh, channels at the surface. Um, very large number of uh, time points. So the decomposition is not going to be very effective. What's going to yeah. be very effective in EG Lab is this clean raw data tool, which is basically the one that uh, simply been imported and reconfigured from BCI Lab uh, that, is, that uh, Christian uh, developed for Brain Computer Interface, which allows you to live to, for instance, four channels because you're doing BCI uh, or other kind of or, or other kind of live recording. This allows you to clean up. So clean raw, raw data is exactly that. It will allow you to clean all the data, remove all the uh, components, uh, such as you know eye movement, muscles, hearts, uh, channel noise, automatically as well. Uh, here we combine both uh, clean raw data and IC labor. Uh, so mm -hmm. I would say in EG Lab, the best is to use clean raw data, either from EG Lab if you do post. Uh, data analysis, if you do within uh, uh, as you're recording, clean raw data also exists within BCI lab. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks. But, yeah. No. Okay. Thanks. And we also have a question from Matthias. And because he's the next speaker, maybe Matthias, while you ask your question, you could just pull your slides up. Um, but if you want to turn on your video and ask your question, that would be great. Yeah, uh, let me ask. Um, so I was wondering about how you how you describe the analysis. So how, what what um, would it just be code that? So if somebody else wants to reproduce um, a particular analysis, would you supply the data and the code, or is there some kind of abstraction? So I'm I'm quite interested in possible solutions for that, and that's why I'm asking it. Uh, yeah, no, what we're sharing is the data and the code. So now, for people who are not very familiar with code. Also in EG Lab, you've got a, a common called EG Lab history, which basically if you do a first and first fee analysis with a GUI, it will generate the code that we use uh, as you click on the different buttons. Uh, so that you know, it allows you to uh, be able to record. But uh, yeah, we don't actually create an abstraction of the code, we just you know, uh, share the code. Uh, okay, and that includes no. things like random seeds and so on, so that... No, no, that's, that's the thing, is that uh, that's why, for instance, we had things like I was saying, like uh, three lines of code. So this is, so you've got low-level functions, but the, the whole thing is that we develop many of high-level functions. So for instance, first level, make design, and you don't, you know, there's other stuff behind the hood, same as for running the first level analysis, is simply pop limo. Obviously, you can imagine there's plenty of other stuff going on behind the scene and the same for the random effect. But you don't need to know all of that. All you need to know is two, three line, common lines uh, and it just runs everything for you. So that's, that's how we've seen as creating code which allows to code with a relatively high level, no need to go to every single step of an analysis. You just have one function which will carry many different steps for you in one go. Okay, thanks. Okay, great. Then we should uh, transition over to our second speaker. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Anna. Um, and maybe we'll have some more time at the end. So uh, our next speaker...